Welcome to the Goalie Hacks podcast, the show dedicated to providing elite tips, hacks and strategies to take your game to the next level, where we help you become an elite goaltender, one hack at a time. And now, here's your host, Mike Santaguida. Bang, bang, everyone. How are we all doing? I'm your host, Mike Santaguida, and welcome back to the show and we got an enormous episode for you guys here today and man i couldn't be more excited to publish this discussion i had with the one and only king of goalie gear the man the mystery the legend the goalie gear nerd and you guys asked for a gear segment and i tried to give my community members what they're looking for and i've been anxious to record this one for a while now and i figured what a better time to get a gear session in than right now with all the new sets and the nhl coming back so I know you guys are going to absolutely love this near two-hour special today, and we dive into every major new set of gear, each company, what's going on behind the scenes, and I ask some seriously provoking questions on the state of goalie gear landscape in 2020 and what to expect in the future as well. Definitely listen to this one all the way through. You won't be disappointed. Shout out to my newest patron, Derek Namlik who just moved to Mount Pleasant, North Carolina. And Derek has been a member of our community for a while now and just signed up for the Hacker Tier to work with me 1v1. And I appreciate the support, Derek, and I couldn't be happier to introduce you to the Inner Circle. Super excited to work together, man. So if you guys are interested in working together, 1v1 with me on a much more personal level and joining my mentorship program that's growing rapidly. Make sure to check out the details at patreon.com slash goalie hacks or click the link included in the show notes to join today. Shout out to our monthly Neural Tracker X League winners. And man, do we have a crazy good month inside the group. Shout out to Nate Bergen, who officially set a new group record with an average high score of 3.65 crazy the previous group high was 3.55 and we thought that was untouchable but nate has been on the ntx for almost two months now and has nothing but great things to say about the positive impact it's had on his game in recent months excellent work nate keep up the hard work man and shout out to jesper vickman who was actually an ntx giveaway winner and coming in on the month is the most improved improving about 144 percent from his baseline tests and of course, shout out to all our runner ups and all the rest of the members of the group. I'm incredibly happy with the focus, consistency, and support that we've been able to develop through utilizing the group chat. And NTX has become an integral part of everyone's training routines, and the feedback has been phenomenal. If you're looking for a cheaper alternative to the Sense Arena while getting the same benefits and results, the new VR compatible NTX is definitely for you. So hit me up directly for more details on how to get started today. Last announcement, if you guys want to have an opportunity to be featured on our podcast Q&A segment, head to speakpipe.com slash goalie hacks to record your questions and send them in for a chance to be featured on the show. And we have a few submissions now and are close to closing out this opportunity for the meantime. So definitely don't wait to take advantage of this opportunity to be featured on the show. Now, without further ado, let's get into this week's episode. I know you guys are going to love the chat GGN and I had today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Goalie Hacks podcast. I'm excited today to be joined by the king of goalie gear, one of the most notorious gear experts in the ice hockey goalie niche, the one and only goalie gear nerd. He's been around for almost four years now and provides the goalie community with tons of gear insights that you can't get anywhere else. I'm not a gear expert, but I know a lot of people have asked when we would have someone on the talk gear. And on this program, we listen to the community and we give the people what they want. And who better to have on than GGN? How you doing, buddy? Thanks for coming on the show, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Great to be here. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to meet you, brother. Pumped to have you on. And uh, I mentioned you prior to coming on to record that I'm not really a gear guy. Obviously, I love gear. I think all goalies do, but that's not necessarily my forte. I like to sort of stay in my lane and all my expertise relate to providing advice on the performance side of goaltending. So, No, no. I, again, I'm happy. Uh, I always joke around, you know, I think you are one of those uh, that is an expert on technique and uh, all the other you know, perhaps arguably more important parts of uh, the game. Uh, I, uh, for some reason, have always got obsessed with the other side of things, and uh, uh, that's what I focus on in terms of the gear. Yeah, well, 
to be honest, I, I had gear issues like over the years. I wish I would have known more then between like glove breaks and pad breaks. And, you know, like when I went to college, there's all this pro level customization options, which we didn't really have before. And I was just drowning in it. I was drowning in options. And, and I got put into some bad spots, honestly, with, with getting the wrong glove breaks and even pads and stuff. I, I used to wear like, you remember Reebok, like X-Pulse pads? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it was sort of like you pick it off the shelf back in the day. And then when I got to college, I was like, man, I don't, I don't even know what I use or like what I want. You know, I'm sure that you encounter people all the time asking you questions, right? Well, and, and and I had the same experience. I'm a little bit older, so but I had a, a similar experience. And really, back in the day, quote unquote, there weren't a lot of resources out there uh, in terms of in terms of the gear. You maybe could get your hands on uh, the company catalogs, but more likely you could maybe get the retailers' catalogs, and they're just listing the specs. And you know, they're these huge financial investments, and you know, you, you shell out a lot of cash or your mom and dad shell a lot of cash uh, for a new set of pads and you get them and you realize, whoa, these don't work for me at all. <sighs> you really don't have the option then to turn around and buy a, a new set. And there's not a lot of uh, trial and error options out there, you yeah. know, again, quote unquote, back in the day. Uh, and definitely a lot of what I'm, what I've been trying to do with Goalie Gear and is kind of be a resource uh, to people to say, hey, hey, look, here are the distinctions between the various brands various specs help them make a little bit more of an informed decision when it comes to buying new stuff yeah yeah and i love that and maybe we can just dive right in and, and start off you know maybe you can just give us a bit of your hockey background if you feel comfortable and then you know just diving into the origin story of how goalie gear nerd started sure yeah absolutely so oh gosh been a goalie for 30 some odd years 30 plus years still play uh a couple times a couple days a week yeah um and uh you know, um, really uh, was, I always tell the story that, you know, the first time I had any exposure to hockey whatsoever, my mother collected um, uh, uh, trading cards. She had a picture of Kirk McLean. Kirk McLean, when he was in his Black Vaughn legacies and, the, you know, the, the iconic uh, Canucks um, jerseys. And I remember vividly looking at that card going, I don't know what this guy's doing and what the sport is. <laughs> But he looks awesome. Yeah, and uh, and so kind of started falling in love with the sport, and uh, at a young age got to got to skate out and play goalie. I was a pretty good skater. I I, I averaged a goal over a goal a game. I was pretty good at it. I was a horrible goalie, and at the end <laughs> of the season, I told my parents, you know, I really don't want to skate out anymore. Uh, and they said that doesn't make any sense, but okay. Uh, and kind of went on from there. So I, I played, you know, pretty competitively all the way through AAA and everything like that uh, into my later years. Uh, and then I think uh, the, you know, the lack of talent caught up with me probably. Um, but I, but really at that point, I actually, as a 16 year old, got my first job, and it was at a hockey shop. And um, I had been obsessed with goalie gear and I was that kid that carried around those catalogs like I was talking about with me and my backpack yeah. wherever I went and we went to a restaurant. There was no iPads back then, so I would just sit and look through them. And working at that hockey store, all, having these parents come in saying, you know, little Johnny needs a new set of leg pads and I'm going to have to shell out at that time, which were six, seven hundred, eight hundred dollars and realizing that I actually had this depth of knowledge on this very obscure topic and very quickly found out that that actually provided some value uh, at the retail level. So I worked the retail level for a long time and then worked in the industry uh, for, for various gear companies and then uh, ended up starting uh, Goalie Gear Nerd about four and a half years ago. But No, about four years ago. Yeah, yeah. And how come, you know, I'm just curious what drew you into, you know, how come you just had such a strong passion for the, for the gear side of goaltending? Was it, was it more than just the look of it all? Yeah, I think it was uh, part of part of it is the aesthetics. It's so unusual for all sports, you know, um, that that goalies use. You have so much gear. I think secondly, the fact that goalie gear is it's such so different in the sense of compared to other sports in the se fact that it's both function and protection. Typically, it's either one or the other. You know, um, a catcher in baseball is wearing, uh, you know, he's wearing leg guards and a chest protector. But really, uh, more or not, he's not really intended to stop the ball with that. It's the glove. And the glove mm -hmm. is really the primary source for that. And a bat is purely for function, not for protection. For for goalie gear, it's it's the tools we do our job with, and it's the tools we use in terms of protection. And I think that and also lastly, in the last, you know, again, 30, 40 years, 
um, now that when customization of the gear um, became so prevalent, just in terms of colors, the fact that you could have, you know, everyone always looks at the mask art, and I think I love the mask art, but the fact that you can also completely customize the look of your gear, and it's so individualized and so reflective of the person behind the mask. I think that's so, so interesting and so unique and specific to hockey goalies. Really, there's no yeah. other there's no other sport out there where, you know, again, that you wear this much gear that's so customized to the specific individual uh, and in a very, um, in a sport like hockey where we're very team centric, we, not I centric. I just always thought it was kind of interesting that you have this kind of one outlier being the goalie that is really, <laughs> everything he's wearing is really about him. Yeah. Or yeah. Her. It's sort of, uh, it's like you're, it's like it, your style, it, it tells people what you're like, almost like what's your identity, right? Right, exactly. It is, re- it is a reflection of, of, of who you are to a certain degree, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to jump right in. Obviously, I, I you know, we got a, a lot to go over. There's a lot of new gear coming out. Um, it's already out, but we're, we're going to work our way sort of head to toe across the board. I want to get your opinion on, you know, certain companies, certain pieces, you know, sort of the landscape and uh, what are the some of the biggest changes coming? Where are the biggest issues and, and where are we heading? And maybe we can just start off with probably the biggest, you know, gear hot topic of the year. And that's the faves splitting from CCM. And I'm just curious, why exactly do you think they ended up splitting? So um, it's 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 interesting. And it's um, I'm I'm fortunate to have relationships with both CCM and Lefebvre. And I've had those with them prior to this and kind of post divorce. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you will. And I, and I, I've said this once and I'll say it a thousand times. There are really good people at both companies, very smart, um, uh, committed people to goalie, um, in, in both places. I think that, um, you know, they had a very longstanding relationship and the way the relationship was structured was that Lefebvre was, you know, very much an integral design partner, uh, and critical design partner for, um, several of their lines. Um, you know, it specifically pads, glove blocker and helmet. Now the CCM always has done uh, design in house for the chest protectors, pants, skates, sticks, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that, you know, there's a lot of things that went into quote unquote, you know, the divorce uh, at the end of the day, I think CCM is, is wanting to, you know, uh, take a different direction, obviously. And you can very much see that with the access line. Yeah. Um, and I think that for a variety of, perhaps macro and microeconomic reasons, uh, it made sense. Yeah. Um, and, um, it, it really was the last, those types of relationships, um, are not completely atypical. I mean, we, there, you've seen those kinds of relationships before Bauer had something somewhat similar with JRZ and various mm-hmm. other companies have had a somewhat similar model. So this is just the most recent example. Um, you know, but both, so both companies have gone their own way. And I think, you know, both companies are still going to have, have success. Mm-hmm. 